Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Podjolution. I am here with the amazing Mr. Benaya Ward. What's up, Benaya? What's up, Tim? How you doing, my man? <laughs> all right, all right. Listen, what a blessing to be able to, to do this show with you and, you know, bring forward some really cool topics into the community about mentorship, leadership, about our community heroes. Um, today, we have a really exciting topic that we want to chat with you all about. Uh, you know, this is uh, today about spotlighting mentorships, stories of transformation and growth. So we're going to focus today a little bit on what it's like to be mentored in terms of how that may have impacted us at different points in our journey. And what it's also like when you are mentoring someone else and you see the effects of that in their life. Right, man? Man, I can't tell you, like, I feel like that is like such an important, like, topic because i think the testimony is the important part right like we talk that's about right. mentorship but uh the proof is in the pudding that's right and so um i think having having a, a testimony of growth is important because guess what growth doesn't always feel good i mean we had this conversation right. even before we got on uh this podcast how Growth can be uncomfortable, but absolutely you, painful. <laughs> painful, <laughs> painful. Oh. But when you have, when you have the right support, when you have guidance, um, the right people, like as I have you in my life to kind of help challenge me and speak life into me. Um, also, when you have, you know, things like books, resources that can kind of like give you words of encouragement. Yes, it can kind of spark that leader in you. Um, and so uh, before we even get into, you know, time and, and growth, I want to ask you a question, if I may. Oh, all right. I want to ask you, uh, how did, you know, the time that you put in, right, to um, mentorship, how did it lead to growth, uh, not only for the people that you mentored, but also how did it um also help you grow when you receive mm. that that's an amazing that's a, that's amazing yeah so you know i i think i used to look at mentorship in so, i would overthink it right when i was younger and i would hear oh you know you need a mentor for xyz um i think i I had a hard time finding a mentor. I, it, it, for me, it's like really more organic um, that you stumble across people in your life that are placed there for a specific purpose. And I think the folks that I have held on to, because sometimes, you know, mentorship also can be in a very short time period, right? Like mentors are not always with us for long periods of time. Um, and so I think what it felt like for me being mentored uh, was, a, a, it's like you have somebody who has your best intentions at heart mm. and you have somebody who really believes in you, but they also get to know your inner saboteur, right? That voice that, that we sometimes listen to, that we sometimes listen to that takes us in the wrong direction. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think I have been really blessed to have a couple of people in my life at different periods of my life that have planted a seed um, of faith and of hope and of encouragement while still saying, okay, but you can't make that particular choice again because that's going to take you in the wrong direction. So wow. that goes back to the, you know, gro growth is painful. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes we aren't prepped in our mind for that type of chastisement. Yeah. Um, you know, I know that in the things that I do, I get very excited about the things that I, that I initiate and the things that I, I choose to be a part of. So it gets to the point where, uh, you need somebody sometimes to slow you down yes. so that you can think about all the steps, you know, and I think that's something that's really cool that you do for me is that, you know, I'll come to you, but I, what about this and this and this and this and this and that? And you're like, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, the funny part about that is, and this is why it's a partnership, because we can actually dig deeper into what mentorship is. Mentorship is a partnership when you really think about it, because 
there might be moments where I slow you down, but there's times where you allow me to pick up the pace, right? Like, right, right. So it's like, it kind of like balance everything, right? Yes. Like, come on, wake up. Like, you, <laughs> you, you, you help to uh, pull that creativity out of me, right? Like, so there might be moments where I'm on a creative slump and right, right. you'll look at a piece of my work and you'll say, bro, okay, what made you not be able to do this? Or, or why didn't you do that? Or come on, like, what, what, what do you want to add to this? What do you want to add to that? Yeah. Um, and then that's where it'll kind of like nurture the area in me that uh, is kind of uh, under the surface. Right. But now it can be exposed because you talked to it. And a lot right. of people talk about it, speaking to something, speaking to a thing, speaking to, see, because it's all about faith as well. Because right. you might not be in a specific space yet in your life, but the mentors and the right people in your life can speak to a certain situation and they can speak to a certain area of you that is uh, for your future. And so that person who is for your future can eventually exist now and can help you to uh, master those areas that's in front of you right now. And so when we come back from the break, we can talk more about um, how certain specific situations challenge us to grow. Yes. Um, and and how in certain situations we have to challenge others to grow. Beautiful. So we'll be right back after this. We have more mentors, leaders, and heroes coming up after this. Podulution, a show that celebrates mentors, leaders, and heroes. Welcome back, everybody, to Podulution, a show where we celebrate mentors, leaders, and heroes. I'm here with my co-pilot, my buddy, my partner in crime, Mr. Benaya War. So, Benaya, I want to start off by asking you, um, when was a time when you were challenged to grow? And then the subset of that question is... When was there a time in your life where maybe you challenged someone else to grow? Wow, that's amazing, right? Um, one thing that's like literally sticking out in my head um, is literally uh, ministry, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for some people who don't know, um, I am a youth minister in my church um, and my leaders so happen to be my parents. Um, and one leader that um, has been very intricate in the details of my growth um, has definitely been my mom. Um, and so, you know, I remember I was serving in ministry um, and had no plans to kind of like, you know, do teachings or, you know, be a, a person to uh, teach the word. But, you know, sometimes leaders always see what's in you before you do. And so, um, you know, she was able to see that gift. Um, and also, uh, one of, uh, the leaders in my church was able to see that and, you know, they saw 
you know, my faithfulness to, to serving, you know, my faithfulness to always being present, right? The, the love and the passion and zeal for um, God. And that was something that was seen. And so they saw it and they were just like, listen, you know, you need to step out and you need to be able to teach this as well. And so I was obedient enough to, you know, teach my first sermon. I was nervous. I didn't know what to do. But all I can do is rely on God, on my family, on what I learned all over the years. Yes. I stepped out and did it. And um, one other moment in time was uh, when, you know, they they gave me the, uh, the proposal to become a minister. Mm. I was like. Woo. Uh, I don't know about that. My stomach would have felt like the Amazon. Literally. <laughs> I'm like, you're held accountable. You got to do more things. But one thing I know, know is that sometimes you're already doing the very thing mm. that you were already called and positioned to do. And That's so powerful. That I had to come to grips that I was already doing it. And that when I go forth and grow in it, that... Mm. I'm going to be equipped with the resources to handle it. It's all about taking that next step. And so mm -hmm. I took the step to become a minister. And then that step led to me, you know, creating a Bible study, creating a Zoom that helps other young adults. And so that's where I also now challenge young adults as well. And so the same uh, strategies that was given to me to challenge me, I also give to others to challenge them. Um, and, you know, I have... You know, uh, young men, young mentees who uh, come to me and mention that the things that were said to them in certain times and areas and hearts, places of their life, they are now walking into areas that uh, they are finally growing in, scriptures they've read or things they've recited that we... How does it feel to see that, act, you know, in action in their life? You know what's so funny? Sometimes it's so easy to like just you know, bypass it because you're so focused on the next thing. But sometimes <laughs> yeah. I I take a moment to realize where these people were. Yes. And when I realize where they were and where they are now, I'm like, wow, this is only a testament of something that's greater than me. And mm -hmm. it's to see the beauty of God's handprints and work and life. And when you see that from one person to the next person, from one generation to the next generation, from one walk of life to the next walk of life, you can really realize that there's something operating that's bigger than you and it increases your faith and it increases yes. your hope. And yes. so with that hope, uh, we have a little bit of moments before we go to break, but I want to know from you, when did that challenge in your growth help stimulate a hope in you that will bring you to the next listen i can tell you i can give you the bullet point of that okay <laughs> here's the short and skinny of that i used to be deathly shy wow. i mean to the point where i would hang on to my mother's leg for dear life <laughs> and and at one point in my youth because my mother's also a, a pastor and she uh you know when you grow up a preacher's kid like you don't get a chance to hide come like, on they will call the light, you from the light. Back, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, she just pulled this big old spotlight out of her purse. And uh, she was like, you know, I want you to come to the front and sing a solo. And I hadn't, you know, I was a kid. I hadn't really sung by myself. Of course, I was in youth choir and Sunday school and all these other things. But I was in a group, you know. I was, mm. like, appropriately hidden for my level of shyness, you know. Um, and that challenge was, like, a step-by-step, day-by-day thing that I had to learn to kind of break through that shell and share uh, my that particular gift uh, mm -hmm. with other people. And of course, because it was in the church, it was a very encouraging environment and that sort of yeah. thing. But, you know, funny thing is that when I got to school, uh, even when I was in middle school, I had started to fall back into that shyness. Mm -hmm. And when I got into to a middle school chorus, you know, even that instructor was like, why are you sitting in the back row? You need to come up front. I need to be listening to you. I need to be watching you. You've got greatness in you. And so those types of challenges sparked my mind so much that by the time I graduated from high school, I wanted to move to New York and go to Broadway. And, and that is drastically different than how I really felt on the inside uh, when I first started. So I think that challenge that started in church with my mom was what really kind of catapulted me forward. That is awesome, awesome, awesome. 
Listen, I feel like people are receiving right now. There's so much richness in this, and we got so much beautiful things uh, coming right after this. And uh, we're going to top it all off with something, a nugget that we can give uh, to the community. So we'll be right back after this, everyone. Stay tuned. We have more mentors, leaders, and heroes coming up after this. Only 57% of New York City high school students are college ready by their senior year. Fifty-five percent of high school graduates either have no plans to attend college or are uncertain that they will ever attend. Thirty-four percent of young adults don't go to college because they can't afford it. Discover what's possible. Bronx Nets education programs, internships, and opportunities help engage and inspire Bronx youth and beyond to pursue their passions. Be a part of the Bronx Net family. Whether you're interested in our shows, joining a class, or donating to support our mission, visit bronxnet.org to learn more. Welcome to Podgelution a show that celebrates mentors, leaders, and heroes. Welcome everybody back to Podgelution, a show that highlights mentors, leaders, and heroes. And so we are thankful to come before you and uh, we're just having a good old time, right, Tim? That is exactly right. Man, That man. is exactly right. Listen, it feels good to share with the community. It feels good to have these conversations that I definitely believe younger generations need to hear, but actually all generations need to hear because we don't talk enough about our mentors. We don't talk enough about um, the people that encourage us and that believe in us when so much of the media that we hear and the attention to things uh, is negative um, yeah. and, and we're pitted against each other. So it feels great to be able to have these conversations. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's knock it out of the park. Um, I, I just wanted to ask you, right, because mm -hmm. when you are growing and when you are a leader, um, mm -hmm. there can be a lot of things that try to pull you backwards, doubts that come in that can kind of stifle you. Um, and so in order for us people to really grow and to really embrace growth, we have to understand that these moments and these feelings of where we feel less than or these moments and feelings where we feel like it can't happen will come. But how do you progress in spite of that, right? How do you progress yeah. in spite of the doubt? I heard a yeah. quote like this, if you argue for your, this is by Pastor Stephen Furtick, mm -hmm. and he said, if you argue for your limitations, you get to keep them. But if you agree with God about what he thinks about you, you get to grow in it. And so how can we be able to progress in spite of our doubts, limitations, what we think? What, what What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, that's, that's, we need another 50 minutes just for that <laughs> one. <laughs> Just for that one question, that's really good. I, you know, so in the spirit of thinking about mentors believing in us and encouraging us and planting a seed of hope within us, there is a transition that has to happen for each individual human being where you are not waiting for the encouragement to be external. It may take a minute for you to believe the positivity that somebody is sowing into your life, but at some point you have to take ownership of it. Because if you don't take ownership of it, and the only time you believe in yourself, and the only time you believe you can actually accomplish something is when someone else is telling you and building you up, then you are actually walking around like a hollow shell. And that is what is going to send you further backwards when someone else says, oh, you were terrible in this, or you should never have tried that, or why would you even think you were capable of doing X, Y, Z when you're such a this and that? Mm. That's what will absolutely destroy you from the inside out. Take ownership of at least one thing, because every single human being has been blessed with at least one thing that they either know very well or that they do very well. We all have that. 
and unlocking your faith and belief in yourself um, is critical because it's the only thing that will keep the negative words that are meant to slow you down, that are meant to rewind your progress, that are meant to uh, throw a blanket over your talents and your gifts. Um, that's the only thing that's going to keep you going. And so I remember when I came to New York at the age of 19 and I went to performing arts college and I started auditioning and I walk into a room for the first time and there were at least 20 other guys that looked exactly like me that had the same uh, dream that I had that had the same, you know, even better levels of training than I had uh, dancers that were doing crazy stuff, vocalists that could just like riff and bust notes and do all these things. And immediately that voice was sitting inside of me like, oh, man, you should have just had you should have went on over to the dollar menu. Like, why you even show up to this audition? Like, what what do you think you're going to get out of this? And what God did for me in that moment was he silenced those voices just long enough for me to walk into the audition room and do the audition, do the songs that I had prepared. And I actually got hired on the spot. Wow. So you cannot look at somebody else's talents and gifts or knowledge or wealth or whatever privilege they may have um, in opposition to where you feel like you're coming from because your path is different than somebody else. Mm -hmm. And the things that you are meant to receive will always come to you because they have been ordained for you. Mm -hmm. And so I think the transition of ownership of feeling positive uh, within a person, within yourself, uh, is the thing that has to happen for you to not receive, you know, for you to not feel those setbacks. Everybody goes through moments of doubt. Everybody goes through moments where they're like, oh, I don't know, should I maybe? I don't know. But as long as you continue to take that step forward, what is for you is going to come to you. Oh my gosh. Like that is. <laughs> like mic drop right there like i mean just do you, do you experience the same thing like how do you how do you feel about it i mean listen man i feel like like i i experience it every day <laughs> <laughs> i feel like that's one thing especially in our generation we deal with a lot of mental health um yes. and so you know you can always hear those those thoughts trying to oppose right your belief yes. Um, but there's an opposition for a reason, right? There's an opposition that's there because it doesn't want you to, you know, grow. It doesn't want you to receive what's for you, right? right. To be the best version of you, to uh, to be the most authentic version of you. Yes. Um, and I think sometimes those are lies that we be we can tend to believe. Um, and I think I love the very thing that you said about taking ownership, right? We have to take ownership again. Yes. I think too much and too, and for so long, we try to take ownership of everything else. We try to take ownership of doubts, insecurities, fears, and we never get to take ownership of who we truly are and the essence of ourselves for, for who we are, our flaws, right? Our, That's right our proclivities, yes. our, our, our personality, our traits, right? We never so love that, mm -hmm. right? And that's what mm -hmm. makes us different. That doesn't necessarily make you weak. That's, that's right. What you set apart. It, it makes you stronger. Listen, I don't only claim the things that I like about myself. I've grown to a part where if I make a mistake, I go right to my boss like, yo, I need another date. Like, I totally messed this thing up. Like, here's isn't what that I the did. full here's human experience? Problem. That's right. That's the full human experience. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't take away or it doesn't, it doesn't uh, take out the, the, the flaws. It doesn't take out. And I think that's how God created us. Yes. He created us perfectly imperfect. That's and right. We have to embrace the journey, the scars, the beauty, all that. And that's what makes a leader grow. I that's think when right. you become the most truest form of a leader, it's to embrace every part of you, even the parts of you that you might not want of you. But you embrace it because you know it's eventually going to tell a story and it's going to fulfill purpose. I love that. I love that. Like, and talk about a mic drop. I mean, that's that's and it. And, and, and listen, we, we, 
We could go on for years, for centuries, but you know how we rock here in Podjolution. That's you know, right. This is this is a show that you know is I really think built for the next generation. Also yes. built for those who are sowing right now into the community. People even who need to hear this that needs a uh, a uh, uh, a a re. A recovery of what they've lost, like that's right. People who've lost their zeal. I just think that this is needed, and so I feel filled, and I hope you are too. I definitely do. This is that Control Alt Delete, yes. right? Where you yes. reboot your old school computer with that Control yes. Alt Delete uh, trio. <laughs> you know, you some no, but sometimes we have to reboot our way of thinking mm -hmm. because either we were never taught how to sustain positive emotions or we've gone people have gone through so much trauma like what you're talking about on a daily basis but have gone through so much trauma that we forget and so i love your word recovery we have to recover ourselves recover the greatness in you recover yeah. the great things that um that you know that you have to offer to the world in spite of anything or anybody in your environment or in your inner circle that are telling you the opposite of what's in your heart you have a seed planted in you so that you can deliver that fully experienced, that fully realized forest out into the world. And that, and that is the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, <laughs> right? Like just the fullness of, of everything. And so it doesn't, it doesn't exit out nothing. That's you know, right. this is what it's all about. And so listen, and part of me, your experience at some point, I'm growing because I'm learning from you and, and at some point. And vice versa, my brother, <laughs> and vice versa, because it's an ebb and flow. It's there an is not flow. just a person who is only a teacher, because if you reach a point where you feel like you have nothing to learn, you're dying. And 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 we going to end it on that. <laughs> that being said. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> I know y'all jealous of our mugs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, take care. We hope to see you again for another episode. God bless. Take care. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll be back next week with another episode of Podge Illusion.